Hey everyone, I uh, hope you're all doing well. Um, sorry I've been, haven't done a long form video in a little bit. Um, just been focusing quite a lot on the podcast and a few other things we've had um, going on more in the day to day side of the business, um, which is, you know, it, it all comes as part of the territory, but I'm sorry uh, the video and like content creation side might have um, taken a bit of a dive. Um, but what we can do is like if you're interested and in, enjoy the content in that if you keep up on uh, Like follow us on Facebook and that that'll be the your best place to be able to keep up with the day-to-day -day running of um, everything I post a lot of uh, Just pictures and videos and all that kind of thing of any interesting fish or fun plants or anything that happens really within the within the business so um, That'll be your best place to keep up to date really um, but yeah, aside, aside from that, um, today we're going to be talking about, I wanted to jump on and talk to you guys about fish foods and what is important to consider, how to choose them, uh, all that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, what, what we're going to do is I'm going to do the usual thing of showing you guys around just like looking at the fish while I talk over it, just for the main reason that it's going it, it, to, this, this kind of topic doesn't have too much visual sort of content in it and you know it'll be more fun basically but first we're, we're going to talk about how do we what are the main things to choose when it comes to these kind of things like these foods um and how do you know what what's a good way to distinguish between a good one and a bad one um so i thought what we use is this one here the new life spectrum cichlid pellets uh this is the 150 gram size but you know it applies to all of them and we're also going to use this one over here uh, I don't know where it went, but well, we won't use that. We'll use around this side. We're going to use the JBL ones. We'll use the JBL Nova Rift, and we'll use that to compare. So you can see there. Oh, that's not in English, so that's not going to help. You can see here. The first thing I'd always look at is the what does it even say? Oh, the ingredients. So here we can see vegetable byproducts, vegetables, cereals, algae, mollusks, crustaceans, fish, all that kind of thing. And then we'll compare that to the New Life Spectrum one, which is here. Um, focus. Krill, squid, wheat. I don't even know what that says. Oh, fish, seaweed, seaweed, kelp, garlic, all that kind of thing. So the thing with the ingredients is all at least all pelleted food is going to have some form of a what they call a filler and the basic reason for that is you need them otherwise you can't make a pellet uh like it just to make all the good stuff bind to each other you're going to need a pellet to i mean a, a cereal to bind it and so that's great and all but the problem we get is with a lot of food brands you'll find that those you know Whoa, those wheat or yeast or whatever um, kind of low quality, nothing of nutritional value byproducts are going to be very high and make up too much of the food. So basically the problem with that is then that's not going to be offering the fish very much nutritional value. It's just going to be kind of, uh, it's like eating just like wheat, uh, not wheat books, what's the other one I was thinking of? McDonald's. Um, so like fill the fish up in that but it's not gonna you know help them grow or like make them color nicely or anything like that so what you want is just to check and see what sort of levels of things and like the ratios and all that uh is within the food you're obviously not going to have um access to the exact recipes or anything like that because those are all proprietary uh but you you can usually tell the things that are listed first in the ingredients list are going to be the most uh biggest percentage and then the things like as you go down the less and less it's going to be per packet or per pallet um so you want to look for ones that have the most amount of real whole foods and the least amount of these what we call fillers um so i mean not to name names but hikari is one that quite notoriously has a lot of the lower quality fillers like your yeast or your wheat or that kind of thing and then something like a rapashi is going to have a lot more of the sort of real stuff um so like you know you can see soldier fly lava krill banana squid mango peas 
mulberry fruit i think um all that kind of thing um so yeah that's the first thing i'd look at the second thing uh to consider it's not necessarily the be all and end all is i'd, I'd take a look at how much protein is in each food um this will depend on your exact fish that you're feeding for example if you're feeding i don't know a something carnivorous like a you know malawi eye biter compared to if you're feeding something um what's that what, what do you call it when it eats only vegetables whatever that thing's called um herb, herbivorous like a you know bristle nose or something you'll want to check the protein and see somewhere around like 40 percent is going to be good for a predator fish and then something closer to like maybe 30 percent um would be good for a herbivorous fish but again, I'd check that compared to each specific fish that you're looking to try and feed. Um, and just make sure that it's in the right kind of area. And then that will give you your best opportunity to kind of fuel your fish's growth and coloration as like the, in the most appropriate way. Um, the next thing I'd consider is cost. Um, obviously, cost is going to be very important, as it is with anything. Um, but I'm going to think of it maybe discuss it in a way that you might not have heard before so when i talk think about cost i'm always thinking in terms of like how many days or weeks or like feedings is this container going to give me compared to another similarly sized container or volume of food um and i think this is where some especially something like rapashi has trouble is because it's very um it's not the finished product so like obviously if you don't know with rapashi it starts off as a powder you mix it with boiling water and you get uh food basically you get gel but the problem with that is obviously the gel is not straight out the container you have to make it so the way i'd think of it is like a lot of i get a lot of times people say oh but rapashi is so much more expensive than everything else but you know in, in terms of like just what end of the day dollars it might be but the thing is it's going to last a lot longer in terms of like feedings and like keeping your fed, fish fed for longer because you mix it with water to make the gel so that's something that I'd, I'd consider is how long is this going to last and then you know you want to compare that to a similar amount of food so like you want to compare that to say a you know pellet of if it's making I haven't done the math, but if it's making 300 grams worth of food, which is the volume of one cup, how much is that going to tra- equivalent? What is the equivalent in if you were to make that out of pellets or flakes or, you know, that's going to feed my fish for X amount of days. How many days do I need? Do I think this is going to last? Um, it's maybe a little bit tricky in terms of how to think about it. But it's going to be the best option in terms of like working out what is the most cost efficient over time. Um, And when it comes to things like pallets, obviously buying a bigger packet or like a bigger container or a bigger jar is going to last you longer and going to be cheaper per gram than it would be to buy it out of, you know, 100 mil jars and just fill it up in that way. But then you also have to balance that out across like, you know, what money you have available like a lot of people don't need you know two kgs of food that'll last them that'll all expire before they use it so that's all part of what i consider but it 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 would be i i do really think it's better to buy as much as you need as you can use if that makes sense so it's like buy the biggest one you can afford so it works out per gram cheaper but don't don't do that in in terms of like don't buy a one kg thing of food if it's going to take you eight years to use one kg and then it will all be expired by the time you go to finally get through it so yeah and then the only other thing i'd say to kind of think about is the variety and the natural diet of your fish so a lot of fish um in the wild don't eat other fish you know they might eat say uh insects but if you're feeding them something fish heavy in terms of its its nutritional value that's going to give you more problems than if you just did 
a thing that's going to be more insect based or more algae based or you know whatever um so yeah that's kind of what i would say would be the the most important thing to consider with it um so yeah i mean that's pretty much all i had but i'd be very interested to hear what you guys are feeding your fish what's most popular what ones have you not had success with all of this kind of thing um so yeah i mean feel free to leave it in the comments but yeah i mean very basically just feed whatever is the, got a lot of uh not a lot of these kind of fillers lower quality stuff and and is more based around these whole ingredients that you recognize um it's pretty much all i had um so i'm a little bit rusty in this video creation thing but yeah i mean hope you guys have enjoyed i'm very keen to hear your thoughts and i'll talk to you guys later bye